Hello. Well, I got a few emails about the rubric assignment. Um, I went over how to make a rubric with Rubistar and uh, the chapter lecture, but we'll just go revisit it a little bit and talk about how to make rubrics, rubrics in general. If you put a rubric maker in Google, rubric makers in Google, you're going to see a plethora of different rubric makers, and I haven't gone through all these. Um, there are a lot of rubric generators out there, sample rubrics, um, common core rubric tool, all kinds of things. Um, they even have uh, some content, a couple of content math rubrics. I'm sure you could find rubrics for just about anything you wanted um, that are already done out there. And again, that's a good thing because in my world, you can never have too many rubrics. I save up just about every rubric I have. Um, the one that I like to use because it's very fast and very easy is called Rubistar. And if you just type in rubric makers, I'll have the URL for this under the vi this video. But if you just type in rubric makers in YouTube, uh, or YouTube, uh, Google, um, this stuff will come up. I'm not sure about Ask or uh, Bing or anything else, other ones. I know if you I, if you put it in Google, this is what's going to come up. So uh, be aware of that. And I just go to Ruber Star Home. And again, this is really quite simple. It's easy. 100 points in my mind it should take you all of about 20 minutes um, you don't have to log in you don't have to do any of this uh, stuff you can search for a rubric um, if you want to but essentially find something that you want to make a rubric with now eventually you're going to have to write a lesson plan in this class and you're going to have to tie it to some type of content so i know a lot of you are not elementary or a lot of you are not education majors but you're doing something i know i have some computer science people for example so you might want them to uh your students to do a presentation on how a motherboard works or something like that so could be either an oral presentation or a multimedia presentation. Let's just, for the sake of argument, say it is a oral presentation or a demonstration. If you click on oral presentations, um, you'll see different things. Uh, debate, history, role play, interview, presentation, and planning, and newscast or just an oral presentation, a rubric of it in and of itself. But also look at the other ones that are here, science, building a structure, lab report, science felt fair experiment, drawings, math, graphing, problem solving, art, music, work skills, research and writing, products, and again, multimedia. So we just want to do a simple oral presentation rubric. So we're going to click on that. And again, you can pick whatever you want. Um, you need to start thinking about doing a lesson, what you might want to do your lesson on. All you have to do for this is simply um, put your name in. Give it a name. And they want your zip code. No big deal. Now, if you want to sign in and use this for a lot, all the time, you would go ahead and register and create a login and all that stuff. 
If not, um, you just want to say this is a temporary rubric. So that's it. So again, a rubric has uh, criteria and then ranked categories. This is a criteria. The 4321 would be the ranked category. Again, you can edit just about anything you want. So, um, at FAMU, we use uh, favorable, and that, and that you don't have to do this, but um, acceptable, uh, marginal, and unacceptable. F A M U. Okay, that's what we use in the college of education. But again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Points will not be deducted. Again, you can give this category a name. Um, and you can, you can type in your own category if you want to make your own rubric line. I tend to just see what's out there. There's a lot of there. Okay, uh, content is a big one. It shows a full understanding of the topic all the way down to doesn't seem to understand the topic very well. Uh, if someone's doing an oral presentation, think about what the, the top four or five things that you would want them to, to be able to do. Um, prepared, were they prepared? That's a big one because student does not seem prepared at all to present that would be a good thing to do so we got content preparedness um, vocabulary uh, uses vocabulary appropriate for the audience extends audience vocabulary by defining words that might be new to most of the audience so that's a big one for me in oral presentations all the way down to, you know, they're not doing a very good job. Generally with a uh, oral presentation, um, we have a time limit. I think that'll be the last one, but uh, we could do probably all these if we wanted to. But again, we want rubrics to really be short and sweet because we're presenting them to students and we really don't want them to be overwhelmed so we try to keep these down to four or five maybe six so uh, one thing that happens with oral presentations is people go off topic so that's a big one um, there was one more uh, speaks clearly um, enthusiasm comprehension, all these types of things we could do, posture and eye contact. You know, one of these are, some of these are all kind of simultaneous, so um, we'll just say posture and eye contact. And then finally, time limit. We'll do six for this one. And then you decide, you know, is do you want them to do five to six minutes? You can change that if you want to, you know, ten minutes. Um, long as required. say it was seven minutes long or whatever you know all the way down to uh, it was you know three minutes or more than ten minutes so once you get this done you know you can see all these categories you're gonna hit whoop submit preview your rubric and 
that's what it's going to look like. So um, it's very nice. You can you can copy and paste this onto a Word document. If you want to go back and modify it, you just click that. Um, you can print or download. And you can make it available online. If you click print or download, and this is what I tend to do too. And we'll try to do this. My computer's running a little slow today. But can create an online browser document. You can print and save as a PDF. I've done that before. Let's, let's try that real quick and see what happens. So you can go to File, Print. I know you can't see this, but. I'm going to click PDF and save as PDF and see what happens. I haven't done this one in a while. Um, let me just save it there in the old $15 million grant folder. And there is my rubric. I just want to check it out and see what it looks like. Why that's opening up. Um, wow, there it is. So, uh, what it's done is kind of, let's see here. You know, the other reason I only like to have four or five is sometimes this happens. I have a sixth one and then we have a little problems here, but still it'll work. You know, it's all there. Um, the other one we can do is, uh, we'll just hit the back. We can download to Excel spreadsheet. And again, the computer's a little slow today. Here we go. But essentially, this will put it into a uh, it'll. Uh, uh, it's saying open in my rubric. It automatically opens up Excel. Again, this may take a second or two. See, your computer's running a little slow this morning. And it opens it on an Excel sheet, and um, that one's real easy to copy and paste into a Word document. So I want you to either make a PDF or a Word document um, or an Excel sheet. It doesn't matter um, to me. You can do you can do any of them. Um, here's the Excel sheet. And there is the um, presentation. Or the rubric and it's in a real nice format and this easily uh, copies and pastes into a Word document. So Word document, Excel sheet, uh, PDF doesn't matter. Just want you to go through the exercise of making a rubric. So please get that done. Um, I'm going to extend this one week extra because there was some confusion. So it will not be due this Saturday is the 22nd um, or the 21st rather um, it will be due next week again we have a class meeting on Monday it is mandatory be there thank you